Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, this end time sign is accelerating. But before we talk about it, I have a personal request for you. Guys, I ask that you can pray for me and my family, for protection over us, for uh, just peace and calm in the storm of life as we deal with just life in general. I want to turn your attention to this scripture right here. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So guys, I have no doubt that we're under attack right now. We've been under attack for a couple of months pretty relentlessly. <laughs> Attacks you know, not necessarily on our family cohesion or our uh, peace within Christ himself, but attacks on our time, on our finances, on... Uh, just day, our daily schedule, our ability to get things done, our ability to get rest, our ability to have prayer time and alone time with God, the ability to have rest, all of these things have been under assault. And I have no doubt that it's because the enemy is trying to thwart, well, videos like this, the work that we're doing, the work with on Rumble and on YouTube and on Odyssey, on Substack, the notes over on Substack, the articles on Substack, all of those things as we create uh, these messages and put them out there, the enemy wants to take them away. So I mentioned in the last video, uh, this past Friday, I was driving, my daughter was in the passenger seat, and we hit a deer and Fortunately, we're both fine. We, we weren't physically injured in that crash, but well, the van is totaled. And so we, you know, we have a rental car and we're dealing with that. And then the reason this video is late, a day later than I had intended it to be, is because Tuesday night I was at the ER with my wife until uh, well into Wednesday morning. <laughs> And then uh, she was at the hospital for a good portion of yesterday. She's fine. She's doing well, well on the road to recovery, to totally unrelated to the deer accident. But guys, just pray because the enemy is trying to do everything he can to distract, to uh, knock us off our game, to be able to really prevent this type of content from getting out there. I have no doubt about it. As we see right here in Ephesians 6, 12, we know what we're up against. So your prayers are very much appreciated. They mean the world to me and my family. So I ask you, please continue to pray for us. That will very much help. So let's get back to this video. This end times sign is accelerating really even more so it's, it's an ex exponentially i believe what are we talking about well let's take a look at ezekiel chapter 38 so ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 speak about an alliance in the last days called the gog of magog alliance that forms against israel and launches a surprise attack and invasion of israel and God supernaturally destroys that attacking force. And here in Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 1 through 6, we learn who those attacking nations are. So it lays that out here with Persia and Ethiopia and Libya joining Gog of Mag from the land of Magog. And the it lays out the nations and if you've watched this channel in the past, you know that I like this map right here from Lamb and Lion Ministries. You can find them at ChristandProphecy.org. I just think this is really 
stands out with the colors they use and showing these nations, these names that were used in Ezekiel and what the modern day geographic locations of those are, what nations they are today and what nations we would expect to see in this alliance. And we've been seeing this alliance come together slowly over the years and really accelerate over the last 15 years and really even each passing day seems to bring more news of this forming alliance, which I would point out, this alliance has never existed in the history of the world, but we're seeing it form today. And Ezekiel 38 and 39 tell us it will form against the modern day nation of Israel because it says when the people are gathered from all the lands all over the earth where they've been scattered, so it's speaking about the modern day nation of Israel, and it says that this will occur in the last days, in the latter days. So we know we would expect if we are in those last days, which we are because Jesus said, when you begin to see all these things take place, you can know that I'm near, I'm right at the door. And we're seeing those things that Jesus and the prophets said to look for what they're, the prophecies of the end times, we're seeing the stage being set for those. We're seeing those converging in our generation in a way that previous generations simply could not say. And so we would expect to see this alliance forming, and that is exactly what they are seeing. And one of the key member nations of that alliance up until recently, in fact, just three years ago, people were saying, well, I'm not sure how this nation fits into that alliance because it was Afghanistan. And Afghanistan at the time was occupied by United States, the United States military. And people were saying, well, how is Afghanistan part of this alliance? And then we saw, well, the Biden administration simply abandoned Afghanistan. The Taliban that had been in control moved back in. And now we're seeing articles like this one from The Diplomat. It says, Russia expands oil trade south via Afghanistan, seeking warm water ports. Afghanistan is emerging as a key transit point for Russian oil as the Kremlin seeks to establish new trade routes to Asia and the Middle East. And guys, again, there, Google this, look this up. You'll see numerous articles going back many months of increasing diplomatic ties between Russia and Afghanistan, especially following the Russian invasion of Ukraine as Afghanistan is a nation willing to do business with Russia and they are seeking out those that are willing to do business with them. So let's see what this has to say because I think this is really important and shows this alliance coming together. It says, last week, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Afghanistan announced plans to build a logistics center in Herat province in western Afghanistan, according to an interview given to Reuters by the Taliban's Minister of Trade. As part of this agreement, the governments of the three countries will prepare a series of official plans for the creation of a new logistics hub within two months. The answer to the important question of who will finance this logistics hub remains elusive. The proposed hub will operate as part of the wider International North-South Transport Corridor, INSTC, a 7,200-kilometer intergovernmental transport project first established in 2000 by Iran, Russia, and India. The list of participants in INSTC later expanded to 14, including Oman, Turkey. <laughs> or we, not we notice some of these, these are many of the nations outlined in Ezekiel chapter 38. Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Ukraine is also a member, although the current conflict has put a stop to its active participation. The starting point of the INSTC is in Russia. 
freight is then transported along a series of road rail sea networks that are part of other continent straddling transport projects in the region. The route currently runs through the territory of Russia, Azerbaijan, Central Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, and Iran. The logic behind the INSTC is simple. The INSTC is designed to be the shortest overland transport route and is considered an alternative to the Suez Canal as it cuts 30 days off shipping times for goods between India and Russia. So let's take a look back at this map and you can, you can see what, what we're talking about here and we'll get more into this in a moment, but Russia in the past has been focused on trade with the European Union. And in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war, we're seeing a lot of that go away and they're trying to shift a lot of that trade to China and India. To do that, this corridor becomes really important and it's strengthening ties between Russia and these nations, which all of these nations north of Afghanistan, between Russia and Afghanistan, have historically had strong ties with Russia and the Soviet Union. But Afghanistan obviously went had a war with the Soviet Union. Uh, 1979 to 1989, following the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, they have not necessarily been allies, but we're seeing them come together out of necessity, out of convenience, out of it's in the best interest of both, as Afghanistan is now run by the Taliban. They're an outcast on the world stage. Russia has been ostracized from many of its former part trading partners. And so this is driving them together. And as we see, if you want to get to India and China, well, especially India, your direct route from Russia, if you're going to pipe oil down or transport other commodities, is right through this corridor, which means Afghanistan plays a pivotal role. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So we're seeing Russia getting closer and closer to Afghanistan. So this says, finding new sanction-busting trade routes have become increasingly important for countries like Russia and Iran. <laughs> Again, two of, two of the critical uh, nations listed in Ezekiel chapter 38. Global events such as the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 and the Suez Canal crisis rattled global supply chains and laid bare bottlenecks and trade route vulnerabilities. As such, long-delayed transport projects like the INSTC were suddenly revitalized. More broadly, Russia has been eyeing up an active role in transport and other railway projects in the Global South. Projects like the INSTC in the Belarus Russia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan transport project have taken off lately and have been getting a lot of diplomatic attention. Developing southbound trade routes is viewed by Moscow as crucial to advancing its agenda of pivoting trade relations away from the West. And guys, that's what we've been seeing really on the front burner for Russia for China, for all of these nations involved, what have we been talking about? The BRICS alliance and this movement away from the dollar-dominated global financial system, trying to bifurcate the world into two different markets. And so this plays into that. It plays a pivotal role in that, which means that this will be an area of attention for Russia, China, and India in particular, as well as Iran. We'll look at that in a second. It says Russia's selective transit strategy is not new. After the first wave of sanctions following the invasion of Crimea in 2014, it adopted the same policy of rerouting its pipelines and energy exports through, quote, friendly transit states. So here it's implicitly saying, they're allies. <laughs> the INSTC offers a vital economic escape path for Moscow and Tehran 
as they battle sanctions. It unites multiple transport systems across various countries, with Russia and Iran being the two countries contributing the most to the infrastructure development projects, counting for 34.6% and 33.7% of total planned investments, respectively. Kazakhstan has a 16.5% share investment in the INST project. So again, for Russia and Iran to send oil to India and China requires the cooperation of all of these Magog countries as well as Pakistan. So we can see this alliance growing, forming, and getting very close. So this goes on. Let's read the conclusion of this. It says, Western policymakers have been mulling over Afghanistan for a while now. But as they try and wrap their mind over how best to proceed, Russia has already made advances. These changing currents reflect shifting priorities from regional and global powers. Europe was the Kremlin's longtime economic focus, with the European Union contributing more than a third of Russia's trade in 2020. It's worth noting that most of Russia's supply chains are built to cater to Europe. But now that landscape has changed, and Afghanistan is once again brought back into the spotlight for better or worse. Again, this is a critical land bridge, a gateway to China and India for both Iran and Russia. So we would expect to see this. And guys, this follows on the heels of we just did a video recently talking about uh, Libya and Russia and its involvement in Libya, the establishment of a Russian naval base within Libya and having a military presence in Libya, and the same is true in Sudan. So Russia is establishing a military presence and naval bases on the Mediterranean and on the Red Sea through Libya and Sudan. So we're seeing every aspect of this alliance tied together here in our day and time. I don't think that means we're going to see the Gog of Magog invasion of Ezekiel 38 and 39 tomorrow, because again, there's a critical component missing, and that is Israel needs to be in a state of tranquility, a land of unwalled villages, so I believe maybe, perhaps, the current conflict that we see with Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran, all of the enemies immediately surrounding Israel, that could escalate and then come to a conclusion with Israel in a state of peace and tranquility, thinking that they have established a lasting peace, and this alliance catches them by surprise and invasion but we're seeing the we're seeing the stage set the pieces are being put in place for all this to happen in the near future even though i don't think that near future is tomorrow it could be a year from now 3 years from now we're really seeing the stage set for that there's debates on whether the rapture of the church occurs before or after Ezekiel 38 or 39 I believe it occurs before, so this could still be some time away, but the rapture still be very near. Of course, we know the rapture could happen at any moment, so that's always the case. But guys, we're seeing this alliance form, an alliance outlined 2,600 years ago that would appear in the last times right before Christ returns, guys. So we are seeing the stage being set for that. That tells us that well, fulfillment of this prophecy is near and the rapture of the church is also near. So guys, keep that in mind as you go through your day. Let this fill you with hope and the nearness of Christ return. So let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Again, I appreciate any prayers you could send our way. As I said, I feel we're just relentlessly have been under attack for two months now, maybe longer. 
and the, it's it's an attempt by the enemy to just wear us down, make us weary, make us tired, push us off of the schedule of doing these types of videos. So, you know, keep that in mind with all that's gone on this week. There may be uh, messages you've sent or comments you've sent that I haven't addressed yet. I'm not ignoring those. We've just been slammed this week, but I will get to those soon, God willing. So, you know, guys, I'm going to keep doing this no matter what till there is no more breath left in my lungs. I will keep pressing forward no matter what the enemy throws at me. But prayer is super important because I would prefer not to have all of these uh, hit incoming hits from the enemy while I'm trying to do all of that. But guys, I'm, I'm moving forward no matter what. We've got work to do. We've got a job to do. Jesus is with us. He has won the victory already. So we will press forward. The enemy is not going to stop. These videos, the articles on the Substack, any of it, only God can stop that. And I don't think he wants to right now. So <laughs> we're going to move forward. Your prayers are very much appreciated. Again, you may leave comments and I may not even see them or get to them right now, but I will do my best to get to those as soon as possible. In the meantime, feel free to leave those comments. Make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. Guys, when you do that, more people see these videos and then maybe somebody's life is transformed by Jesus Christ. So make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons and God willing, I will see you on Friday. Well, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to visit my Substack at brittgillette.substack.com. There you'll find my latest videos and articles, as well as notes, where I share the latest news headlines, the articles I'm reading, and the videos I'm watching. Subscribe for free, and each new post on Substack will be sent directly to your email. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and hit the subscribe button. As an added bonus, your first welcome email will include a link to a copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.